turbofan airplane, hydroplane, then overran the runway at Salgado Filho International Airport in Brazil in February 2000. A thunderstorm was passing over the airport at the time of the accident. 20 out of the 111 passengers were injured, many during the evacuation procedure. Another plane tried to take off at a taxiway in fog in Guarulhos International Airport in 1986. The airplane overran the runway and came to rest against an embankment. One person died during the evacuation. A turboprop sustained fire on the left side engine during the landing roll. After the airplane stopped, the crew tried to extinguish the fire unsuccessfully and then initiated an emergency evacuation using only the right exits. The flight attendant opened the main cabin door and the first officer opened the lateral wing exits. Passengers attempted to take carry-on baggage. One minor injury was reported. The three accidents described before highlight a few of many of the safety issues involved in emergency evacuations, and they prove a fact known by all crew members. Evacuations are potentially dangerous situations, and they can lead to serious wounds or losses of lives. This video, applicable to the ERJ-145 jet family, has been prepared for the purpose of diffusing general knowledge on this subject and providing technical information for the accomplishment of a successful operation. Before entering the main subject, let us see the leading event that takes place before an emergency evacuation is carried out. Many evacuations are preceded by accidents or incidents. In some way, aircraft emergency evacuations are normally associated with accidents or incidents, something that threatens survivability of occupants or may cause serious material damage. We will show you a table that lists the main factors leading to an emergency evacuation. Evacuations may be caused by many factors. In a study published by the NTSB, Engine fire or suspected engine fire accounted for 39% of 46 evacuations studied. Following it were cargo smoke or cargo fire indication, smoke in the cabin, and gear failure. When reviewing some smoke evacuation episodes, however, it can be verified that some of them were not necessary. There was a case where when an aircraft was ready for takeoff, the crew received a radio transmission from the tower stating that the fire was coming out from the tail section, probably from the APU. Shortly after, the fire marshal reported smoke coming from the fuselage and ordered the engine shut down and immediate evacuation. Since the crew had no way of confirming what was happening in the tail, they complied and gave the order to evacuate. But after the aircraft was towed back to the gates and inspected, no fire or damage was found. The flames were due to residual fuel momentarily burning in the tailpipe after the APU was shut down. It was in fact a false event that resulted in passenger injuries. The encouraging large number of people who survive an accident, even the most serious one, is the main argument to treat all evacuations seriously, so that we may improve all the circumstances to permit survivors to remove themselves safely from the aircraft. Actually, according to the statistics produced by the European Transport Safety Council, 90% of the accidents are survivable. In a study carried out by the NTSB, 96% of the occupants involved in a Part 121 accident over the past 18 years survived the accident. A number of actions were taken in the past and certainly will continue to be taken in the future to improve this situation. These are the case of inclusion of fire blocking material, floor proximity lighting and smoke detectors. 
Besides, many studies regarding escape scenarios, that is, exit and passageway width, and passenger behavior, have added new inputs to understand what can improve passenger survivability. Take a look at the OV145-116 ERJ145 doors operation to assess pertinent and important information regarding the importance of doors during an evacuation. The effective communication between flight crew and cabin crew has a special significance on successful evacuations. Good communication between crew and passengers shares the same concept. An aircraft sustained serious engine damage in flight in 1995, and an evacuation had to be carried out after the crash. The flight attendants briefed the passengers and handled the emergency in an exemplary manner. She checked with each passenger to make sure that they all understood how to assume the brace position. During her work she saw the treetops from a cabin window and immediately returned to her seat and shouted her commands. After the crash, although she was seriously injured, she continued to assist the passengers and to extinguish the flames. The main concern is that the flight crew did not announce the proximity of the impact and no discussion was held with the flight attendant regarding the time available to prepare the cabin. There was no further communication with the flight attendant after the crew announced the emergency to her. If the flight attendant did not have sufficient time to fasten the seat belts, she might have received some serious or fatal injuries. Airline training department and management staff must ensure that flight attendants and flight crew are adequately prepared to confidently handle in-flight emergencies. This is especially true for regional airline operations where flight attendants work alone on the aircraft. Past experience has shown that when the CRM training was done together with pilots and flight attendants, the contribution that one part can make to another is the highest point where the emergency can be handled properly. True to passenger communication involves the pre-flight safety speech, the written safety card and the emergency speech itself. The pre-flight safety speech must include information on smoking, emergency exit location, seat belts, compliance with signs and the location of floating means. Use of oxygen must also be included if operation above 25,000 feet is expected. Pre-flight speech should motivate passengers to attend and be as attractive as possible to increase passenger attention. The flight attendant must be enthusiastic, speak clearly and slowly, and maintain eye contact with the passengers. Anyway, previous surveys indicate that 54% of passengers may not watch the entire briefing just because they had seen it before. 15% of passengers consider that the speech is basic knowledge and will not pay attention to it. Some passengers will be reading, sleeping, with a view obstructed or distracted with children. Despite of many actions taken by the authorities to improve passenger attention to safety speech, a large number of passengers may continue to ignore it. Printed safety cards supplement the oral speech, containing diagrams and methods of operation of emergency exits and instructions to operate emergency equipment. But again, previous surveys reveal that passengers tend not to read the cards. In an NTSB study, it was revealed that 68% of the passengers did not read the safety card. Moreover, a great number of passengers did not listen to the safety speech nor read the safety card. The consequence of these incredible numbers is that a strong leadership will be required from flight attendants to take prompt, assertive and decisive action yet providing most immediate assistance to passengers when an emergency situation arises. Instructions about leaving every luggage behind during an evacuation are written on the safety card and are verbally given by flight attendants. Despite of these two methods, passengers often take their belongings. 
Even though flight attendants are instructed to shout leave everything to the passengers, when an evacuation command is given, attempts to retrieve and take carry-on baggage during the evacuation has been reported in many instances, representing risks and delays. The primary reason for passengers to grab their baggage have been identified as money, wallet, credit cards, keys and medicines inside bags that are real obstructions to evacuations. Flight attendant training normally does not address what to do when the passengers do not follow the leave everything command. However, flight attendants have reported arguing with passengers over the baggage. Others have thrown bags through the exits to clear clutter of the exit. Another situation of a passenger that stubbornly tries to go back and re-enter an evacuated plane to get the luggage caused a strong reaction by the flight attendant to convince the passenger not to do what he intended to do. Jumping out of the exits or off of wings might be a fearful situation for some passengers. For instance, there have been real cases when passengers hesitated to jump to the ground during emergency evacuations. Some passengers exiting may even decide to stay on the wings after exiting via a door without slide, thus interfering with a smooth evacuation. Two points must be emphasized when the discussion is about assistance given by firemen. The first point refers to the fireman's familiarization with the evacuation procedures for a specific aircraft operated at the airport where the fireman is in charge. The firemen are sometimes forced by circumstances to do his job without knowing how to open an emergency door. They don't usually know beforehand the correct way to get into an aircraft in case they have to break into it. This deserves special attention on the part of the airport authorities. The airport must have firemen trained to carry out procedures specific for each aircraft operating at the airport. The second point refers to the communication between firemen and crew members. This communication is essential for a successful evacuation. The firemen are usually the first to arrive at the accident site. They have useful information about the external conditions of the aircraft that can be vital for the crew. Statistics show that the crew conducting the evacuation will be doing it for the first time and probably the only time. It must be pointed out that written procedures are very important at this critical moment. The procedures must be clearly written and readily available to assist the crew. The evacuation usually begins because of a fire or the presence of smoke as previously shown. But there are many other emergencies that the flight crew must consider. An evacuation must begin after an emergency landing beyond the runway limits, a fire on the engine, APU, landing gear compartment, electric or electronic equipment, or the cargo compartment.